Hi guys! So today I wanted to share with you my top tips for radio telemetry. <laughs> I know I already talked about radio telemetry a lot in my other video, but it's such a useful tool and if you have these tips up your sleeve, you will definitely have an easier time using this. I promise this will help a lot. Oh, here comes the truck. So my first tip is a simple one. Um, on your Yagi, a lot of people hold it in the middle section here because then it's balanced over your head. It's easier, it's lighter, you can hold it up there longer. But I notice if your signal is weak, having your hand in the middle of it can kind of disrupt the signal. A lot of people will disagree with me, but I swear it's true. Like, I notice that when I'm holding it on the rubber grip at the end, I get a stronger um, and clearer signal. So if your species is far away, I would hold it as close to the end as possible. Until you have a strong signal, honestly, then it doesn't matter. You can be holding it upside down and you'd probably be all right. But you really want to hold it at the end if it's a weak signal. My second tip is really get to know your technology. Um, so every species, every receiver, all your equipment on every project will be a little bit different and know that there will be a little bit of a learning curve for it. So I know, and the other techs have actually showed me this, that there's a certain dial on here for the gain that we call our sweet spot. So it means when we get full bars at a certain level, we know the skunk is in a 50 meter radius. And so being able to look at it and say, oh my gosh, I'm at the sweet spot, like, he's really close. That is so helpful and so good to know. And I wish I had learned about the sweet spot sooner. Knowing your sweet spot, knowing your receiver, understanding how it works and the connection is just vital to your entire project. So you have to just be patient. I guess that's my, th my next tip is be patient. If you're new to this, it's going to take you twice as long as someone who's been doing this for years before you and no it'll take you a long time you're gonna get lost you're gonna follow the wrong signal um, especially working in the mountains we deal a lot with bounce so that means that the um, noise the caller is emitting that beep that it gives off will actually bounce off of like the mountain slopes and so you can be hearing a signal from multiple directions which sucks it's exhausting but I have all the time in the world to get what I need to get done. So if it takes me four hours or if it takes me 10, it's okay. Like it's expected of you to take a long time. And especially if you're new, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, my next tip is to avoid power lines. So I learned about this in school and I, I didn't really quite see the effect until I was actually out in the field some reason, if you are at a power line, walk past it, avoid it, don't point your, your antenna at it. Always turn your car or truck or vehicle off. When the engine's running, it causes static and it messes up your signal and your reception and that's no good. So I always notice I have a stronger signal when the engine is turned off. I also notice sometimes you have to just take little steps. Like standing here and listening, and standing here and listening can be the difference between hearing a beep. Oh, here comes another truck. Can mean the difference between hearing a beep and not hearing a signal at all. So move around, get to know your space, don't be afraid to take a few steps, don't be afraid to climb a little hill, um, to get higher up off the ground, usually height is a good thing. It means your signal can travel farther and faster and better. So sometimes I will climb on top of the truck to get a better signal um, because I want to know exactly what direction I'm heading before I just start hiking into the forest. Yeah, so thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Bye! Okay, my next tip is to avoid power lines. There's so many trucks going by. 
No.